you compelled to bring the exercise that we did from last week's class? So, um, it's loaded. Did you guys from last week's class actually do this? There's something in this exercise. So, if you want them, they're going to be over here. You can watch last week's class to get um, context. But you could just spend this as a quiet time with the Lord and just let Him walk you through this. And I believe that God is in the business of setting people free. Amen? Amen. I heard a very uh, confronting comment today, and it's kind of rattling around my brain. I'm not sure why we started with that, but that's what he said, so we'll go with this for right now. That um, Jesus didn't come to do counseling. Jesus came to set people free. And I have even said this in this class when you've heard me talk about the stuff I'm doing to my kids with different need counseling. And, and, and I laughed about it, and I was so confronted about how we've kind of gotten into this idea of we're going to live crippled all of our life. And we've just taken on that notion of living crippled all of our life and oh, that's the best I can do. And that's so counter to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Because if you go back and read Isaiah 61 and then again in Luke, he said, I'm going to set the captive free. I'm going to give you a, for praise instead of mourning. I'm going to bind up the brokenhearted and I'm going to set the lonely at homes and give you a double portion. Listen, a double portion for your shame. How bad is your shame? He's going to give you a double portion of his grace. Now why are we going, this is as good as he gets? Hmm. I won't be talking about that anymore. And so now, what I have is like epiphany. Ah, that's where we're talking about this. Because I just had this crazy encounter with the Lord. I better write this down. God is in the business of setting people free, and we have that power within us to release that kind of power on earth and in heaven as it is on earth as it is in heaven. And that begins by our expectation of advancing the Holy Spirit, releasing the Holy Spirit, learning how to do that. So what we're going to talk about tonight, God help me, is the supernatural lifestyle. And I'm going to try to get this out, and we'll see where we go. So y'all just pray for me. I'm so excited. I mean, I'm not scared. I'm just like going, I just got, I mean, the Lord brings clarity. So I want to read you this quote. I have this on Facebook, so you don't have to write it down. But I just want to just put it out there. Do you believe? Do you believe? Nobody has the power to take belief out of the believer. Nobody. Nobody has that power. Not even the devil. Do you believe? But you can be intimidated by your surroundings, and you can allow that thing to be crushed inside of you so that you can't flow and you can't function. What you believe about God and what you believe about who you are because of God is everything. And that's a quote by Todd White. So I would come back to the question, do you believe? And I'm just going to put a disclaimer out there because I have no idea where you guys are. Raised in a Methodist church, converted to a Baptist church, which caused a lot of trouble in my family because we're kind of denominational in that way. <laughs> And then I went from a Baptist church to see, where did I go from there? Mm -hmm. Probably to hell all that time when he came back. <laughs> and then, let's see, I went from there to New Age, and then from New Age to Southern Baptist, then from Southern Baptist to Evangelical, kind of not charismatic, but we do talk about things, that kind of stuff, <laughs> to then just give me all you got. So I have been in a lot of teaching environments, and I've been in a lot of teaching environments where the environments that I was teaching was only telling me this much about Jesus, but the Bible was going, he's more, he's more. And the Holy Spirit is actually the one that starts telling me about the gifts. Not the church that I was in, the Holy Spirit is I'm reading the word. Then, oh horrors of all horrors, I'm in a cessationist church, and I start exhibiting these Yes, that's a problem. <laughs> okay? And so I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with all this, so I just keep doing the best I can, trying to just limp along, all kinds of mess. And in the meantime of these gifts going on, there I look back on the goodness of God, and there's deliverance happening, there's healing happening, there's restoration, there's things that weren't, that now are, there's all kinds of new life that's here. 
And all along, the Holy Spirit has been doing these supernatural touches, but I didn't have any words for it. And people thought I was freaking crazy town. Some of y'all have been around a long freaking time. <laughs> and they're, they're <laughs> And you know what? I'm not crazy. It's the dead ones who are crazy. Because I'm closer to Jesus than the frozen chosen. Okay? Because Jesus was all that and more, and he's going, look, I got the scripture we're going to come back to, John 14. You should just go sit in John 14 from now until next Tuesday. Then let's have another conversation about just what's available in Jesus and what's available for you. Because he's going, you're going to do even greater things than me. So I've realized that I've gone to this, I told some of you last week, I've gone to this conference, the movers and shakers in the kingdom, they're doing stuff that would make your hair curl. Listen, they're doing stuff that the rest of the church is saying don't exist. And I'm going, well, it just happened to that entire freaking city. Like, can you imagine? You have to help me with these details. They told this story at the conference. There's this corrupt, corrupt city in a South American country. Guatemala. Guatemala. <laughs> corrupt. Corrupt, corrupt, corrupt. This group, this family, this church, this something comes in and starts releasing the Holy Spirit, starts praying for a revival, okay? The church gets saved, the city gets saved, it's like this massive, all the drug lords get converted, not moved out, converted. Woo! The bad people didn't leave, they came to Jesus, do you understand? Healing, deliverance, supernatural, kind of crazy stuff, and even the land was redeemed, so much so that people from all over the world are coming to this land trying to figure out how come it's producing, and they can't figure it out. I can tell you, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm just saying, God is moving in crazy, crazy town ways all over the country, and well, why not you? Why not now? Why not me? And you're going to hear that question, because I want you to answer it. Why not here? Why not now? Why not me? Why not? Why not you? Why not now? Why not right here? Right now tonight? Why not me? And I'm just saying the Lord's going, let's play big time. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. God's always been ready. Janet, there's a YouTube video just Google Revival Guatemala. Revival? Revival Guatemala? What'd you say? Amal Habanga. Amal Habanga. Amal Habanga. YouTube. You guys got that? Revival YouTube. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you for telling me that. I haven't seen that myself. So... I just want to whet your appetite. So then you're going, well, I can't necessarily convert a whole town, but then I want to encourage you about how the Lord takes us along and how he moves us along. And I had this vision. Oh, yeah, here's the other thing I was supposed to tell you. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit shows up in lots and lots of different ways. And I know some of you have heard this, and some of you maybe haven't. He shows up in oil on your hands. He shows up in some people fall down. He has, you show up in tingling. You show up in just this, like, supernatural... Did y'all feel that earlier? When the Holy Spirit just moves in, it's just like this peace that just rests on you. The show, he shows up in giving you pictures in your mind. He shows up in giving you visions. He shows up in prayer languages. He shows up in healings. He shows up in you knowing something about somebody that you shouldn't know, but you do. He, he got everything. Do you understand? This is the biggest, loaded, he's the smartest creature on the planet. You guys get this? He lacks nothing. And how we may God be this wimpy, passive papal? Come on. He is a rock star. And I don't know why we're not just going, oh, oh, you want to see my boyfriend? You think your boyfriend's tough? Let me tell you about my boyfriend, because my boyfriend's going to kick your ass in the name of Jesus. I mean, he's going to blow you out. Do you understand? It's like, you got to get the magnitude of just how big this God is and what he's about and what he's trying to offer us. Because he's saying, you're going to be like me. So, here's the picture that God gave me in this vision. A hundred years ago, I don't even remember when this was, I know the church it was, there's this accomplished composer. He and his wife write songs, beautiful composer. They go all over the world, all over the country. They perform, they write, they sing. And he goes, I have a very special guest for you tonight. We just listened to this beautiful concert by him and his wife. And he comes up because I have a very special guest for you. And he brings up like his five-year-old daughter. Now, we've just listened to this guy play the piano like you've never heard. And he scoots over, and he's got his little girl sitting here, and his eyes are on her. And her eyes are on him. And she is beaming, right? And so she starts playing this little tiny five-year-old song, right? And Dad is just going, that is awesome. Now, you know that Dad has just broke the piano for the last two hours, and he's 
praising her for her little notes and keys. And what's Dad doing? He's playing a little trill here. He's coming around playing a little trill there. That's awesome, honey. You're just doing so beautiful. And so I'm having this vision, this recall of this memory in worship. And I'm going, God, that's so, I'm so sorry. I'm distracted. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's like, one. You're not distracted. I'm trying to talk to you. So I'm going, wait, what is this? And the Lord's just like going, that is a beautiful picture of walking in the power of the Holy Spirit with the living God. God's got it all. He knows how to play the piano. He knows how to do it. And he's so delighted that you're scooching up next to him, all eyes on him, like dad. And he's going, baby, I'm right. Oh, my darling. Not, not eyes on the crowd. Not eyes on what's going to happen. Just on the effort of this child who wants to be close to me and do like that. You need to pay attention to that phrase, do like that. Because that's exactly what Jesus said. I only do what I see my father doing. And then he's going, you're going to do even more than this. So we should increase our expectation. There's a passage of scripture that says, Luke 6, 40. If you have your scripture, look it up. Write it down for my eyeball's sake. I wrote it down on my piece of paper. Luke 6, 40. <clears throat> The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Another translation, students are not greater than their teacher, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. Tell me what does that mean? Every teacher who is teaching a student hopes for what? Work. And they're <coughs> what? And to exceed. They're to exceed what they've taught them. Oh, sorry, this is another quirky thing about this place. Yeah, Laura's going to go. Chuck, it's okay. Laura's going to go. Thank you, Laura. Um, if you guys can only create anybody else, do you think we're going to put a balloon down here and make it kind of move around? Thank you, Laura. It's a motion detector. We'll get used to it in a couple weeks. Say, Washing feet part. It's the heal the sick, cast out demon, and raise the dead part. We don't quite have. Do I have your attention? <laughs> Jesus is talking about, go back and read 14, 15, and 16. I'm not going to break that all down. John 14, 15, and 16. He sent out the 72. He sent out the 12. He sent out the 72. We read this last week. What we said last week is the 72 come back and go, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. How did this happen? I don't have my notes from last week. But it's come back and go, even the demons, even the demons submitted to us. And Jesus said, great, that's awesome. I'm so glad that the demons cow to you. He goes, but don't rejoice in that. Rejoice in the fact that your names have been written in the book of life. Rejoice in that. Because Jesus is going, doing that kind of crazy supernatural stuff, that's just life. That's like they have the trash. Listen, hear what I am saying. We've made supernatural be unreachable. Most of us don't even know if we believe it's happening or that it's possible for us, right? There's, so you got that whole level of, I don't think I even believe this. I don't even know if I have permission to do this. And then we're going, oh, let's make it something. No, it's not something. It's just being with Jesus, and Jesus does that. And because Jesus does that, and Jesus is in you, we do that next question. Because the thing you want to rejoice in is that your names are written in the book of life, and we're with him, and he's with us. And that changes everything. We are to be the kingdom movers and shakers in our day. There's no cavalry. There's no, I always say that word wrong. Uh, that word. There's no white horses. Well, actually there is a white horse. There's Jesus. We are the answer. We are what the world is looking for. And I don't know about you, but if you sat in those church services like I have, people going, we are the answer for the day. The spirit that I feel in the church is, oh God, what are we going to do? Because we're terrified. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we're terrified is because we've only been taught a partial gospel. You need Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Yes, you do. And once they are forgiven, now let's talk about the 
the rest of the kingdom. You're supposed to be walking as your teacher walked. You're supposed to be doing what your teacher did. Now, don't do the condemnation and don't do the work you don't gospel on me because I'll have to slap you, okay? It's about being with the Holy Spirit. Let us show you. Let me show you. Let's learn together. Come, let us reason together how to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. It begins by intimacy. You're not going to learn your way to the Holy Spirit. You're going to encounter the Holy Spirit. It's a person. It's a relationship. It's like it's not Father, Son, and Scripture. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we've missed this whole side of our, our being a Christian, what it even means. The students are not greater than your teacher. Listen, we are not trying to be bigger than Jesus. People are so afraid. Christians are so afraid they're going to get the glory. No, because if you're doing it the way Jesus did it, who got the glory when Jesus did it? Who? That's why he did it. See, when you're rightly related, you don't have to worry about who's going to get the credit because it's all about Jesus. From him, through him, to him. I can't do anything apart from him, but when I'm in him, I get to do amazing things and all throws back up to him. It's this beautiful circle. Where are you in the circle? Listen, this is a word. Where are you in the circle? Are you over here? Oh, I love Jesus. I don't know nothing like him, but oh, I love him. I say that point to myself. Let me tell you, I've been shook up the last month. Because if my life doesn't look and smell, if I'm not moving in the same power and story that Jesus has, what's wrong with me? What's stopping me? Why am I not? Same question right back at you. If you're not moving in the same ways that Jesus said that we can and should be moving, what's wrong with me? What's stopping me? And why am I not doing something about it? I told my friend who helped me go to that conference, I'm ruined. Because I only have two choices. I can go back to numb and go, I don't know about all that stuff. Or I can say, i got to stop everything. i got to recalibrate everything. I've got to change till my life lines up with the life of Jesus. Now I'm doing what Jesus did. Are you all hungry yet? Because I am dying for more of the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Don't let us sit in any more content-related places. We need to be taught. Jesus teaches, but he's going, okay, kids, sit down at the piano. It's time. Let's begin. Come on, let's start. So the next thing I want to give you is baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. You always begin with baby steps because God is the God of complete seed, then seedling. Actually, it's seed, then root, then seedling, then growing up, up, up. Some of you got to get your shell cracked open. Listen, here's a word that God's given right this minute. Some of you are a shell that's still on a shelf. You need to get buried. You're still trying to preserve yourself and look like a nice, fine Christian. Okay? Nobody's impressed. Because it's just you sitting on a shelf doing nothing. There's no life. There's no movement. There's no figuring out. It's just you. You need to let the Lord bury you. Has anybody seen that thing on Facebook? I just started bawling. Anybody see that thing of um, the doctors I don't know what to do? They were all black men, like 12 or, 12 or so black men. Anybody see that picture? I think they were rescued out of a war zone in an African country. <sighs> And they were all graduating with their medical degrees. And they held up the sign and they said they tried to bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just saw that and I just stared at it. I went, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bury us. Bury us, Lord. Bury us. Let us be seeds, God. Let us see what's really we're about. Listen, when you allow the Lord to bury you, you find out what you're really made of. Because while you're sitting on the shelf, we're just impressed that we can't get anything out of you. There's no God. We don't get anything. Oh, my goodness, did you see what that thing became? So you want the Lord to give you a good burying, a good watering in the Holy Spirit, time to get your roots down and wait for it, wait for it, wait for it starts breaking ground. That's the supernatural life. Some people have just an instant immersion in that. But some people have to grow into so that you can get your understanding about what that's like. I need to give you this scripture, John 5, 19. I only do what I see my father doing. Some of you need to go do some study on the miraculous life. Some of you are freaked out about the mere thought of praying in tongues. If you're freaked out about somebody just going to pray in tongues, you're probably not ready for supernatural life. You need some more teaching. 
Okay, you need to understand that there's a whole lot more on the table than people just worshiping in a heavenly language. Okay? I need to tell you this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out this nugget. Stay with me, okay? When we are like Jesus, when we are doing what Jesus did, something happens. When we do what Jesus did, something happens almost every time. When Jesus healed, when Jesus delivered, when Jesus saved, when Jesus came on the scene, something happened. And almost every time, it resulted in worship to the Lord, worship to God. That's how you know that the Holy Spirit's moving. Because the natural response is, oh my God, I had no idea you were here. And the supernatural, that's the beauty of the supernatural life because it just pulls this out. Now listen, what's so beautiful about Jesus is that the Father was glorified by the Son. And the difference between the enemy, Satan, and Jesus is that when it says in Scripture that Satan wanted to be like God, he wanted worship. This is a, a beautiful thought by Randy Clark. I just never thought about it. He wanted worship so bad. It's not like he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be God. I want all that attention on me. Huh. I want all that on me. So much so that, listen, connect this dot with me. One of the temptations that Jesus went through, right, is that Satan offered him everything that the world offered for what? If you will bow down and worship me. That's how much Satan wanted to be the center of attention. And when you see Jesus, he's always going, it's about the Father. It's about the Father. So if you want to be like Jesus, he goes, no, that means about Jesus. And Jesus is about the Father. It's about these guys. Love these guys. The best small group in the world. I just get to hang out with them. And that's how you know that your heart is in the right place. It's just not about you. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the supernatural. It's just about them being loved on well by you. He's so good. Jesus gave them this answer. John 5, 19. <clears throat> very, very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father do, because whatever the Father does, the Son does also. Who are you? Here's some questions for you. Please write these down, and please be diligent, and go answer them, because how are you going to grow if you don't take the test? The teacher giving you a test. Goodness. Who are you trying to be like? And don't say Jesus. <clears throat> Who are you trying to be like? Really? When this question came to me, I had all kinds of names that went flying through my mind. Who am I trying to be like? Are you trying to be like somebody that you know? Are you trying to be like a teacher that you've seen? Are you trying to be like a person that you admire? Are you trying to, who, who's driving your bus and your identity and your attention? <coughs> Worse, are you trying to not be like somebody? Oh, I don't ever want to be like that person. I don't ever want to be like that person. My mom, my dad, this person. Oh, this church, you hurt me. I don't ever want to do that. Well, your eyes are still not on Jesus. If you're trying to be like someone over here or not be like someone over here, your eyes are still not on your teacher. And you need your eyes on your teacher. Who are you trying to be like? And who gets the credit? Who gets the attention? Who gets the glory? I'm just going to throw this out as a bomb. I will come back to it another week. You can be sure. This selfie nation is killing us. Say <laughs> love. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> your focus on yourself all the time is not leading you to the supernatural life that you're wanting. Because ain't nobody getting attention but you. And the only person that you're drawing attention to is you. And the only thing that makes you interesting is Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I mean, I know you're all that and all that, but you're not. You're not all that. Okay? <laughs> we, we've talked about this in, in times past. It's all for us, but it's not about us. That's a phrase you should put on your refrigerator or on your bathroom mirror. It's all for us. It's not about us. All of the kingdom is ours. All abundance is ours. All the favor of God is ours. It's not for us. It's not about us. It, it's for us. It's not about us. We don't grab it all and go, oh, it's mine. It's mine. No, it's like going, oh, you're so good. Let me pass it on. Truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the work.
works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. <clears throat> I hate that verse. Have you asked the Lord for something and he hasn't done it? Well, he didn't move. He's not wrong. So what needs to line up then? What about the people who pray for healing and they don't get healed? Pray for money and money doesn't come. Pray for the relationship and they get divorced. What happens? What happens in those moments? I just want to encourage you. Bill Johnson says this best. We don't ever diminish the bigness of God by our experience. We don't ever diminish who he is or his identity, his availability, or his possibility by our experience. And the moment that you start doing that, you start making God your side instead of you rising up to him. Also in John, talks about the Lord's going to send you the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom <clears throat> the Father will send in my name. This is verse 26. So I read you earlier, John 14, 12, and then this is John 14, 26. I'm telling you, your assignment is to read John 14 like four times between now and next Tuesday. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. You don't have to remember everything. The Holy Spirit's there. Ask him to remind you. And then he gives this incredible gift. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. And I would like to suggest to you that the reason that Christians are so afraid today is because they don't have the peace. And the reason they don't have peace is because they don't have the full measure of the Holy Spirit. They're trying to do a man-made, manufactured, in my hands, I can understand peace. And that God's going, the peace that I give, it's not as the world gives. So your 401k and your nice little alarm around your house and your policeman not being corrupt and your governor, your, your president, all these little blocks in place, that's not your peace. That's peace that the world gives. I'm talking about the peace that comes of knowing that the Holy Spirit is the biggest, strongest, most loving, most activated force on the planet. And I just want to challenge you. I'm going to keep saying these outrageous comments because I want you to pay attention to your BS meter. Your internal BS meter. I'm being nice because some of y'all aren't But I want you to get it. Right? It's like that, that carnival thing, you know, where you hit it. Like I'm just gonna keep hitting that bell till we can get you hanging all the way talking about, ah, oh, I don't know if I believe that. Ah, oh, I don't know if I believe that. Because he's all that and more. Because listen, the way that you get into supernatural is you work out your unbelief. Because the thing that keeps us from the supernatural is our very un unbelief. Because God's full of belief. Amen? Amen? It's not like God's got second questions. You're the one that has second questions. We've got to work that out. Who is stealing your peace? Here are just some thoughts. The Lord gave me this afternoon. <clears throat> Let me tell you why he gave me these thoughts first. Because the Lord always lets me give me a tutorial anytime I'm trying to teach, so it's going to be a fun, like, couple of weeks here. I'm so excited. <laughs> you get in conflict, you want to pinch your face off. But you can't pinch your face off because you love Jesus and she loves Jesus, so that makes a problem. Can anybody say amen? Amen. amen. You understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> but you still got to deal with them. Right? You still got to deal with this person. And I'm sitting there going, but God, supernatural. I want to kill her. God, supernatural. She's such a. God. <laughs> you are you on track with me? Oh, yeah. The duality of the human and the, the natural and the supernatural coming into play here. Right? So this event, this thing happened, and I texted my prayer warriors. Won't you tell me what you think I'll This is my idea. Won't you tell me what you think I'll do about this? Because I'm just not putting up with this. I, if I said that, one time, I bet I said it 15 times. I'm just not putting up with this. I don't know who she thinks she is, but I am not putting up with this. So there, my prayer word is going, I love this. I'm going to talk to Jesus all the time. I said, damn good thing you are, because I am not practicing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm hot. I'm so offended. You guys got to 
get them so offended. So they come back and they give me boundaries because I stink at boundaries. They give me these really healthy boundaries. You should try this. You should try this. And as I'm getting their text or their conversation, Laura's going, wait, wait, wait. So I'm going, I kind of liked their boundaries because all their actions were kind of consequential, you know. So I got to do something. I was ready to do something. I was going to get to tell her that she couldn't come and I was going to have all this power. It was going to be wonderful. I want you to understand the condition of my own heart, okay? That I was out for revenge. She hurt me. I'm mad. I slapped Jesus on it to make it look right and true. Y'all done that before? And I'm being healthy as an older Christian woman. Oh my gosh. So then I opened up my book and the Lord shows this phrase. Opposition and conflict is always pressing, present with anointing. Get used to it. <laughs> oh, okay. And I just read that sentence, I read that sentence, I read it like three or four times, and the Lord's going, are you going to go down or are you going to go up? And if you go down, are you going to drag her down with you? Or are you going to go up and pull her up as you go? Now the conversation is totally different, right? Mm -hmm. And the Lord goes, if you would stop talking about yourself, we could talk about what she needs. <coughs> There's that selfie nation again. Because as long as you're talking about what you want, what you need, what you deserve, uh, 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 we're still talking about you. I'm still talking about me. And so when I started going through this um, lesson yesterday and today, the Lord said, I want to give you peace and part of peace, listen, part of peace, not part of peace, the totality of peace is because you've been freed from something. What once held you captive so that you're in distress and dis-ease and you have no rest, you have no peace, the Lord has freed you from that so now you can move into this place of holy peace. And the Lord said, first let's free you from you. Kind of the exercise that we talked about last, last week. Are you being tormented? And I'm going, truly, in my thoughts, I am tormented by what I should do or shouldn't do. How can she do this? I mean, drama, drama, drama. Right? Mm -hmm. Free me from myself. And then I had to be free from her. Mm -hmm. Do you have people in your life that you need to the Lord, not you working it up, Letting the Lord delivering you from her. Do you know what? Here's what freedom from you and freedom from that person looks like. You can see through the eyes of heaven. Now I'm postured. Listen, now I'm postured to do something about it where it's for both our goods. Because see, Jesus is always working for your good and that person's good. No, he's not always taking your side. I was kind of bummed about that. He's not always taking my side. Okay? It's like coming into this place of what's doing. So the Lord goes, how about, how about you already see, listen, here's your supernatural life in baby steps. You already know her background. You already know what her life is like. You already know her wounding. Instead of sitting there just hitting those sore spots, how about you do something about it? So I spent the next 12 hours, I release favor and blessing. I release healing. I release this bondage off her life. I release that she learns how to be friends. I pray that she be loved truly over and over, the abundant goodness of God, that she would be loved fully so that she doesn't have to manipulate. I pray for myself that I can learn how to love him and lovely. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's just say that. Put your hand here. God, teach me how to love the unlovely. I once was the unlovely. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Listen, free from self, free from someone else. Now the peace of God, the Holy Spirit, what he promised. The peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus, the self always protects. Here's what I heard this afternoon. The self always protects self. Jesus always promoted God. Self always protects self. Jesus always promoted God. And vice versa. God always promoted Jesus. Love it on that man. Here's the thing. When I say to you, 
learn to be like him. Be like your teacher. If you're not careful, you're going to go on this endeavor of work it up, work it up, work it up. I'm going to try to do this right. And here's what we're missing in today's notion. Don't try to do it on your own. Try to tap into the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that says, I'm going to do it because that's why I'm going to renew your mind. That's why you have the mind of Christ. Take this out of being Bible verses and turn it into realities for you. Just like you got an upgrade on your phones, you turn it and go, oh, look at all this stuff I can do now. That's what renewed mind is. Listen, here's the word. We're not trying to reshape your mess and make it look pretty. We're not doing DIY on your mess. We're totally changing it. It once was this, and now it is this. That's transformation. We're not doing modification. We're not doing renovation. We're doing complete and total overhaul and transformation. And when your thoughts and your minds get there, now you're ready to be like your teacher more and more. The mind of Christ is always learning to be like the master. I have crazy things I could tell you about butterflies, but I just want to tell you, I want to just give you this one picture of a butterfly. I spent a whole season with God giving me this crazy download about butterflies. But I just want you to let your mind think about when I say transformation, you think about this ugly little worm going into this totally isolated place and emerging over time, learning to get its wings working. You know this about a butterfly. You've heard it a thousand times. They can't use their wings right away. They have to let, they sit there and they flex them, flex them, flex them. And every time they flex them, the fluid is going out into their wings. Have you ever seen a butterfly just come out of the cocoon? Yes. It's ugly. Chuck, you should see if you can pull that up. I mean, they're crumpled up. They're just like this. They come out, they don't come out, ta -da! they come out like this. And they sit there and they straighten them out and they move them out and they finally get them out. And then they just sit there like, oh my God, one of these. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then they have to just sit here and they just start moving them. And then all of a sudden they know when it's time to fly. Because now they got this, they're ready to go. That is such a beautiful picture of the Holy Spirit. That's a beautiful picture of your transformation. That's a beautiful picture of what God's trying to do in you. So now, let me tell you a couple of stories, and then I want to go into an exercise with you guys. <clears throat> How real is that request? Do you want me to look that up? No, I'm okay. done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking that.
and go, it's too beautiful for us to put words around. It's too beautiful for us. We just, we end up worshiping. Because we can't say anything else. So. I'm pretty sure the episode's called Black Box. Kind of yes. Black Box, yes. Radio Lab. Yes. Really Thank good. you for stories. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you talked about that, too. Black Box, Radio Lab. Go listen to it. Just And then love on Jesus after you get done. Because you know. Because you know. Because you know how he works miracles like that. So. <clears throat> I will tell you a couple of things to whet your appetite, and then we're going to do this exercise. I have had a couple of opportunities in supernatural healings, and I think I've shared that with some of the class before. But the thing that I noticed that I'm hungry for, and I keep telling the Lord, going, I don't know how to get up to the big boy stage. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look at Bill Johnson, Randy Clark, Todd White, um, Catherine Kuhlman. Go look at people who have rocked the world in the generation that they've lived in. And they'll tell you, every single one of them, do you know what every single one of them say? I just love Jesus. I just love Jesus. And Jesus said, we could do this. So I said, okay. And they do. So there's not some great theology about it. Believing what the Bible says about Jesus and doing what Jesus said we would do in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I just want to encourage you with my baby steps. So <clears throat> about a week ago now, a week ago now, I got this, let me back, I got this moving and shaking thing that started happening in my spirit. I had a dream about one of my daughters. Then I had this um, crazy picture. God talks to me a lot. You want to be having a regular conversation with the Lord all the time. He should just be showing up for you when you're just out and about and you're going, you just feel this um, something, and you know that the Lord's talking to you, because he is actually truly talking all the time. Scripture says that. So you just want to be tapping into that conversation. So I'm driving down. <clears throat> Chuck and I have gone through. I've been, this is where I'm in the sabbatical. And the Lord had given me, I'm driving down the North Shore, and there was this still water pond and four trees. And I'm lamenting. I'm telling the Lord, I'm doing now. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel restless, I don't know what's happening, just calling out to the Lord. And I look over, and I, I, my attention is just caught. That's, that's when you know the Holy Spirit's talking, it's like you're going, it's like there's a pause, like somebody's going, mm. So I look yeah. over, and, and I just hear in my spirit, oh, there's four, four trees, like your family. And I went, yeah, they're little trees. And I just, I just totally blew it off. <laughs> So, okay, because I'm lamenting, right? I'm sad. I'm so sad. So then I keep passing these trees. The Lord's going, trees, planted by streams of water. So now we come back and all this history that I have with God, teaching years upon years about trees. So every time I drive past that, I just pray for my family because God has replanted me and my family from sabbatical. It's another story of the day. So I come by there, and I get another one of these pauses like this, and one of the trees is broken in half. I'm freaking out, right? Because I know I right hear from the Lord. We've been talking about those trees for probably a year. And I'm going, oh, my first thought, oh, Karis is going to get sick again. Not Karis. So then I'm going, Salem? So I go tell Chuck. I think I told somebody else. I go, I don't really know what to do with this, you know? We talked last week about hearing from God and not knowing what to do with it. And your first your first idea is just dismiss it. That pizza. Remember we talked about that dream that that woman had about her husband? And I'm not going to recount that. Go watch it because it's amazing. But So the Lord was going, <clears throat> don't blow that off. So a week later, I have this dream that Salem has been abducted. Now you definitely have my attention, right? Because I'm shaking. And then I'm just out and around. So I'm going to Salem. Salem, hey, like, what are you up to that my radar's? Are going crazy. Mom, you know, typical teenager, like, Mom. <laughs> She's ignoring me, ignoring me. And then she says very unkind things like, you know, just conspiracy theory. <laughs> right? And then I start to believe it, honestly. I, do y'all ever do this with the Lord? You get stuff and you don't know where to hang it, and so you just go, I must just be making stuff up. But I couldn't get over it. So much so that I called in some other people just to be praying with me because. I'm not crazy, and I know what this feels like, this kind of pushing around with the Lord. 
So I have some other people praying. They're getting words off of this stuff. So then I have this huge conversation with Sam because I think I have determined what the root of the problem is. So we go have this. And as we're having this conversation, it was this beautiful building bonding time with me and Chuck and Sam, but it had nothing to do with the threat. There was no threat. And you're like, going, oh, I thought that's what she was being threatened about. Okay, no threat. Okay, well, two days later, she gets in a terrible wreck. So let me tell you what happened in between that meeting and this wreck. Because the Lord is always working and talking. And in my mind, in my baby steps in the Lord, this is supernatural working. Because I'm calling out to the Lord going, I don't know what's going on with Salem, but you do know what's going on with Salem. And I'm fighting for her. I'm continuing for her. So in that moment, because I haven't connected all these other dots, I said to the Lord out loud, I think I'm just making this stuff up. I must just be making this stuff up. And in a moment, he said, nope, you saw those trees, and you had that dream, and you had the prayer people praying for four or five days. I've been trying to talk to you. So then I'm going, what does that mean? He goes, fight for your daughter. So I just started speaking out. God, I contend for my daughter, and the enemy does not have any right to her. He's not going to get her. I contend for her. I stand on the fact that you have given me promises about her. And whatever you has been the plan or assignment against her, I cancel in the name of Jesus. I release in heaven the favor of God her and I bind anything that's trying to take her away. I mean, I'm standing on it. And then immediately I went, is that enough? <laughs> right? And the Lord immediately gives me a picture out of Lord of the Rings. Does anybody see Lord of the Rings? Mm -hmm. When Gandalf is on the bridge, yeah. you shall not pass. And so I just declare that. You shall not pass. And it's like, I knew that something had happened. And so then she has a wreck a day later. And I'm asking the Lord, what's going on here? And the Lord went, you took care of all that business? Then because if you saw the wreck, it should have been so bad. She walks out. She has a bruise on her hand. Her car can be repaired. Everything's fine. No issue. So as I'm trying to walk through life with God, I, I do have stories of healing. We'll talk about that another night. But these are examples of you releasing the kingdom of God in the earth you live in. So these are two situations. Remember the friend that I told you that I wanted to pinch her little head off? The next morning, she's not talked to me in months. The next morning after I have just released the kingdom of God on her, I get a text. I'm sorry. And the Lord just is so funny. Don't blow it, Jim. Don't blow it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just said, you guys are here this. Jesus, what would you say to her right now? And he said, I would tell her that I forgive her and that I love her. Because see, Jenna would have made it really complicated. So I just said, I forgive you. Get that your life in the Holy Spirit doesn't have to be very complicated. It just has to be alive. Yeah. You just need to be hearing from the Holy Spirit and responding and being willing to get over the crazy. And I don't understand and this doesn't make sense, but I'm just going to keep Jesus. Is this, is this you? How do you handle this, Lord? What do you do? What would you have done? What would you do since you are right here right now? He's not far off, but he's right here right now. On earth as it is in heaven. It's a very, very holy prayer. So, what I'd like to do is to take a few minutes to give you this. I've, I've spent a long season in teaching with women that I haven't done these kind of uh, intentional exercises. But I want to do this because I think, one, you'll leave and the world will crush in on you again. And I want you to start to really practice Let's be in the business of cleaning out whatever is in here that keeps us from being a full flow of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So, take a few minutes to do this, and then we'll come back and do the next thing.
But do this week's right now if you don't mind. <clears throat>
industry are <clears throat> people who tread water in five foot, and then there's people who go off the twelve foot and diving board and high dive, and there's even scuba divers, right? But we all need a fresh revelation from Jesus, right? And one of the things that's really important is you can't ever outgive God. So no matter how much revelation that you've been given, He has new man every day for where you are and what you're doing. So I'm going to ask you to do something this way and take a deep breath and let what else you just get out your nervousness. Oh gosh, you know what? So just go ahead and do that now and get over it, okay? <clears throat> because part of building community is I can't build you relationally, but we can build spiritually. Amen? So what I want you to know is that there's 100% of Jesus in every single person. Despite where they are relationally, sexually, emotionally, churchily, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff just doesn't even matter. So what I want you to do is I want you to get in groups of twos and threes. If you're there by yourself, then connect with somebody. Just grab somebody. <clears throat> Sorry, that's wrong with you. And here's what I want you to do is I want you to pray at the same time. So those of you who go, I don't pray out loud. Pray out loud because nobody can listen to you but Jesus. Okay? <laughs> but I want you to get in groups of two, three, and I want you to release favor and blessing. Mm -hmm. I want you to contend for the woman that you're touching. Because she needs a supernatural touch. And he's also going to use you to do it. And don't be impressed with you. It's not about you. It's the Holy Spirit in you. But we like you. Okay? We like you a lot. So don't let your thoughts about you, listen, don't let your thoughts about you diminish who God is. Amen? Amen. Okay, so stand up, grab arms, two, three people.